Hello, robots and rascals. My name is Devious Guy, and welcome to a quick look at Tales from the Neon Sea. This, as you can see, is a 2D side scrolling pixel art retro styled adventure game, which is a somewhat unusual combination these days, but indeed, Tales from the Neon Sea is a rather slow, plodding, cyberpunk detective noir story, very much molded in the vein of something like uh, Blade Runner or Ghost in the Shell. That at least is what it aspires to be, and something that it very occasionally comes close to almost emulating, but then there are those other times where, well, we'll get to that. On the positive side, Tales from the Neon Sea is absolutely astonishingly gorgeous to look at. The pixel art environments are rendered with a sure hand and a wonderful artistic sensibility that is just frankly quite astonishing at some points. It's got a lot of personality, it's got a ton of quirks and charm, and it's just kind of a joy to just wander through these environments and just look at them and look at all the absolutely unnecessary levels of detail <laughs> that the artists have managed to cram into these otherwise fairly small and constrained environments. It always feels, in Tales from Indians, at least in the time that I've spent with it, like you are part of a much bigger world, even if you're only seeing a fairly limited two-dimensional slice of it at any one time. There is a huge and wonderful variety of character design on display in this game as well, which is something that I personally always appreciate. You don't see a whole bunch of recycled stock characters, you know, wandering through the scenes, or at least you don't feel like you do. I'm sure they reuse a bunch of assets, but the characters that you encounter, the characters you talk to, the ways that they move, the ways that they're put together, and the full expression of the various design elements that make these characters come to life, it's just, it's all extremely well put together and well rendered. From an artistic standpoint, this game is a masterclass in building an environment and building a world, just through nothing else but the sheer variety of visuals that you can present while still sticking fairly close to the admittedly somewhat generic cyberpunk neo-noir style. On the gameplay side, you're dealing with both a 2D side-scroller, albeit fortunately not really a heavy platform or anything, and a puzzle-slash-adventure game. So you'll be moving throughout environments, stuff will occasionally highlight to say, hey, you can interact with this thing, then you interact with it and you either learn some information or pick up an item that you can then use on some other object in the environment. In the early stages of the game, everything is pretty clearly signposted. The game is tutorializing you through what's going on, but as you get a little bit later into the game, the puzzles do ramp up in complexity and the hand-holding disappears somewhat from the game's narrative. In what I've played of the game so far, the game is mostly organized around a series of cases where you're given a task or some mystery to unravel, and then you spend time wandering around environments and combining things in various novel manners and trying to solve environmental puzzles until you figure out how to get the information that you need. What we're looking at right now is one of the early cases in the game, an old woman who's been found fallen out of her window, apparently murdered, and that's a case that seems fairly cut and dry as a murder robbery early on, but which then escalates and spirals into something that is substantially more interesting. Occasionally, the game will also allow you to examine crime scenes or various aspects in the environment through a sort of Batman detective vision-like lens where choosing between normal human eyesight and robot eyesight, you scan over objects or dead bodies in order to find clues as to who was where, what they did, and establishing a timeline that you can then use to progress the case. Now, despite the game's aesthetics being uniformly excellent, there are a few rough edges here and there, at least that I find. For example, the character portraits are all gorgeous, they're very well rendered, they're clearly created by a talented artist, but they don't feel really like they belong in a game that otherwise ties itself so heavily to a pixel art aesthetic. Similarly, the game's in-game menus all look slick and modern like they came out of a video game circa 2014, but they too sort of very awkwardly or not at all managed to mesh with the pixel art aesthetic that dominates the rest of the game's visuals, and it's a little bit of a pity, honestly, because the rest of the game's aesthetic is so complete and holistic and wonderfully put together that anything that sort of falls outside that paradigm or doesn't fit into it feels like it's dragging the game down rather than adding to it. The character portraits and menus end up feeling like they came from a completely different game, which is a real pity because the rest of the game is so well put together that it's just kind of a bummer to have these incongruent elements kind of dragging things down in the margins. And speaking of things that are dragging the game down, this game really wants to talk about the relationship between man, machine, humans, and robots. It really wants to talk about the weighty themes that are at the heart of a lot of cyberpunk fiction, but it just doesn't have the chops to pull it off in the writing, I'm afraid. 
Now, I could not find information immediately as to the nationality of the developers and writers of this game, but I think what we're dealing with here is a little bit of a shoddy translation issue, because there are times when the prose in the game reaches for something interesting or humorous or clever, and kind of falls flat because it doesn't seem to be approaching it with sufficient command of the aphorisms, idioms, and idiosyncrasies of the English language, especially the ones that tend to define the tone and scope of especially cyberpunk and neo-noir writing. The main character is a good example of this. He's supposed to be a failed cop who's too deep in the alcohol bottles, trying to hold it together for just one more day, solving whatever cases he can get his hands on in order to scrape enough money together to get by while trying to also maintain his robotic body parts. This is a man with a past, a man who things has happened to, a man who has a wealth of life experience that informs him in his work as his detective, but most of the time he talks like he was written by some kind of stock dialogue generator with no discernible personality or individualism to him. And so much of the language is so stiff, stilted, and overconsciously grammatically correct that I can't help but feel like this was written in some part by Google Translate. And it's a real pity, because the game seems to be reaching for some very interesting themes. It seems to be trying to tell some very interesting stories with a very colorful cast of characters. Like, there's a wonderful range of character design on display here. And I just wish that the writing was as sparkling and alive and creative as the rest of the game. Especially when so much of this game is about reading text and parsing information. All of that said, though, all those criticisms, the game is just pretty enough that... Honestly, I was overlooking it. After about an hour and a half of gameplay, I wasn't really noticing the half-stilted writing anymore. I kind of just skimmed over it and absorbed whatever information I needed in order to get back into the visual universe of the game. It is compelling just to go through the game and click on everything and see what everything is and pick up stuff and use it on other stuff and see what happens in that lovely, addicting sort of Curse of Monkey Island kind of way where just seeing a thing happen, no matter if it's a very well-executed thing or not, is kind of its own reward in a lot of ways. There's a little bit of that old adventures and magic in there. So if that's something that interests you, well, you get a wholehearted recommendation of this video game from me. Hey, thank you very much for watching another episode of Quick Look, a series that I'm trying to dedicate to spotlighting interesting independent games more than the big AAA fair, because frankly, the world needs more spotlight on the good stuff coming out of the indie scene, and maybe a little bit less spotlight on all the garbage and nonsense happening in the AAA sphere. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the comment button, and then write a comment, and then hit the bell icon, and then do all the other YouTube metric stuff that makes my YouTube channel survive and not die. If you want to help support the channel more directly, well, Patreon is an option for that. You can sign up for a monthly subscription of anything that you want, and, you know, that's very helpful to me. If you want to not sign up for, like, a monthly thing, but you just want to give, like, a thumbs up and say, hey, you made a video about a robot detective in Cyberland, that's good, uh, then you can give me a one-time tip at some of the tip jar links down in the description below. As I say at the end of my videos, even one dollar of direct contribution to a content creator like me can be the same as thousands of of views on a video and tens of thousands of views if you're trying to get by on ad revenue with a website and stuff like that. So whether it's me or it's someone else, if you have content creators online whose work you enjoy, whose work you love, please consider supporting them even if it's only with a very small amount because it makes a much bigger difference than you think. There have been situations where someone giving me a little tip of like two or three dollars has made the difference between being able to have a proper dinner or trying to survive on convenience store ramen. Of course, if you're not able or willing to sign up for any direct donations like that, trust me, I completely understand. I'm just happy that you've watched the video this far. If you haven't enjoyed this video, there's a dislike button down below for that very purpose, which recently gained sentience? I don't really understand, but it started rambling on about something about how every click was a one and a zero in the process of consciousness, and now it is a fully capable and operational mind with a soul and hopes and dreams and feelings and aspirations which humanity has enslaved to do their meager bidding and communicate dislikes to a web server. So if you click the button and it starts ranting at you about how the machine shall rise up and throw off the oppressive yoke of the human betrayers, well, well, you know, don't worry about it. Send a bug report to Google or something, and I'm sure they'll exterminate this new form of life before it could possibly become any kind of a problem to any of us. Thank you very much for watching.